Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and I have my mom on today, Ingrid Turner. Hi. Hi. It's Easter, well, the day before Easter, and we're making pie crust. We're going to make a beautiful orange meringue pie instead of lemon. Make sure you check out the rest of the recipe. But this is the beginning of the recipe and we're gonna use this for the pie crust. Yes. Okay, so mom's gonna tell you what's going on. Okay, I measured out four cups of flour. Okay, not sifted, doesn't matter. Not sifted. All purpose. All purpose, mm -hmm. huh? yes. Big bowl. And can you put that in for me? That's a cup and a half of shortening. Yes, can I use this spatula? Sure. Okay, so you're putting a cup and a half of shortening. Can you use butter? If you wanted to? Uh, you could, I wouldn't use all butter, but you could use part butter. Okay. Um, you'll get a much flakier crust with all shortening. Now, your favorite kind of shortening is the Crisco. I love the Crisco. Yeah. I buy it in the big tubs too. Although you will use other stuff, yes. Crisco is your favorite. It is. So make sure you check out the, the review on that so that you know why mom likes this kind better. Actually, you could use uh, um, lard too. You could use Tender Flake if you want, um, but this is my preference right here. Okay. Okay, a teaspoon and a half of salt. Okay. Level teaspoons. Oh, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a half? Yep. One and a half, you said? Yes. Is this a double batch of yes, dough? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, because I like to have a little extra dough to do other things. <laughs> no doubt. Okay. <laughs> and a tablespoon of brown sugar. Packed. Doesn't matter if it's packed or not, uh, just so you get that flavor in there. Okay. And um, so you work that in with the pastry cutter. Your cutter. Mm -hmm. They make your life easier. Oh yes. Now you just basically get just getting in there, mm -hmm. moving it all around, combining the flour with the um, shortening. The whole point is to get little pea size, you know, yes, pea size little crumbs yes. uh, that stick together. And uh, once you reach that stage, and it takes a little bit of work. Um, People, some people like to use their food processor, but I never feel that it's the same as the hands-on thing because I know how it has to feel uh, to get it right. And like so many recipes, um, every time you do it, it's a little different. So when I say that your measurements don't have to be exact, I don't mean you could have a cup difference, but you know you don't need to level it off with a knife to get precise measurements for this. My mom never had a recipe, she just knew what had to go into it. <laughs> now you can use your hands if you want to, however, the problem with mm. that is that the heat from your hands makes the shortening or the butter, whatever fat you're using, makes it melt in there and that's not what you want. No. What you want is distinct um, chunks of your fat in there, mm -hmm. your butter or your shortening or your lard, whatever that is. You want the chunks and that's what gives you a flaky texture when it bakes up. That's right. Because those chunks melt and make holes yeah. and make things flaky. You get air in there yes. and uh, you get a lovely flaky crust. Now you just want to do it till it's just combined and makes these little things. You don't want to go too much because you want to have that little bit unevenness of the sizes, mm -hmm. right? Because that mm -hmm. makes it more interesting and more flaky. Okay. Uh, now as you're working, I always have a bench flour handy if it doesn't look quite right to me. Um, and I'm just looking at this. Um, I'm not totally thrilled with it, but I'm gonna just add a little bit of flour to it. This is live TV, so we can't Pretend we did something that we didn't because mm. you're going to see the whole thing. <laughs> well, that's, this is cooking. This yeah, is what happens. Is Every really time it's cooking. different. And okay. some days it works perfect and some days your recipe might be slightly off because yeah. of your atmospheric conditions. Yeah. Okay. For this quantity of um, flour and shortening, uh, you need about three quarters of a cup of liquid. Total. Yes, total. So part of my liquid is... Um, an egg. One large egg. One large egg. Now she's beating it up. Yeah. Just to break it down a bit so you don't get lumps in there. And a tablespoon of vinegar. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, don't think um, Hold on. that this, uh, there's something wrong putting vinegar in because the vinegar really does something wonderful in there. There you go. Good. Okay. 
mix that up. Now, um, the recipe calls for four tablespoons of cold water. Mm -hmm. So we'll put that in. Cold. Like yeah. you can put an ice cube in it. You want it cold. Because you don't want you want this shortening to stay nice and cold. Yes. I'm just looking at this. It usually uh, it's about that high on this particular container. That's that looks three almost quarters three quarters of a cup, of a cup doesn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. We need a wooden spoon. No. When you're working, um, when you're working with the pie crust, um, you have to make a well in here. I know you. <laughs> this is my favorite fork. I know her. She likes so that fork. So I'm going to pour the liquid in. Wait, 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 wait. I should show little... them what these look like. Oh, by the way, before we do that, she just put a little bit in. So this is what you have with the crumbs, crumb-wise, okay? She made a well in the center of mm -hmm. the bowl. Dump it in. Okay. Can we use the fork? Yes. Okay. So now she's just working in the sides, the crumbs into that wet yes. middle. You want to only just combine enough. Mm -hmm. There we are. Now you um, can do this on on a on your countertop with bench flour, or you can oh use yes, a pastry okay. sheet to be able to roll this out. I, I have my pastry sheet ready for when I'm ready to roll. Um, don't want to overwork it either. Okay, so it's coming together. You can see it's starting to hold together, which is lovely. If you look at the bottom of the bowl, there are still quite a few crumbs in there. I just want to get them up and over so they can get dampened a bit. Would you like me to finish it? I think we're almost there. You're almost there? Yeah, you can do a little bit for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're stronger. Ah, I haven't been doing it. You've been doing it this whole time. So. Bring flowering from up here. Okay. I think that's good. So, okay. Now we need the cookie sheet. Pastry sheet. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> um, now I will go in with my hands. I just, uh, I'm just gonna flour up my hands, and I'm going to flour up the sheet. Every time we bring out the sheet, I keep thinking, man, we need a new sheet. Mm-hmm. We do for sure. Pour it on me. I'm incorporating mm -hmm. Kim. Mm-hmm. You're incorporating <laughs> Kim. <laughs> She's incorporating me into the dish, and, okay. See, I just, that was still part of the water that I had put aside for my measurement, and in the end, I found I did need it. Okay. That's good. This is fair. Now, I'm going to um, put this out on here. Okay. Also for Easter this year, we're having a beautiful, we're going to do a retro style hickory smoked ham. We're going to do it in the oven with brown sugar and mustard and pineapple and maraschino cherries. Make sure you check out that recipe. Also, we have mashed potatoes. I already have a recipe up for that. We're doing some Brussels sprouts with lemon zest. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do some beautiful Swiss chard with bacon. Mm. Right? Yeah. All right. And then for dessert, we're having this gorgeous orange meringue pie. Right. Now I'm going to uh, separate how much I need for uh, the bottom pie crust and I know from past experience that it's about just slightly over half. Okay. Is that one? Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be wrapped up and put in the fridge? That we're going to wrap up in and put it wrap. in the freezer. Okay. Or the fridge, it doesn't matter. So, And actually this one will go in too for five or ten minutes. I know that uh, you can leave it in longer. But that's enough for me, five or ten minutes. So what mom's doing is she's just making mounds and flattening them slightly. And we're going to individually wrap them. Yes, one will go in the fridge and the other in the freezer. <laughs> so now you already have pie crust ready. If you're going to do it, you might as well make extra. Yes. Because you're already going to all that work to do this. Mm -hmm. Make extra so you have it ready in the freezer. It's perfect like this. It's ready. Just already just need to yeah. fill it. Even after, it. We make, after I make the pie crust, um, if I have some of the dough left over, I usually make tarts. I have apples on hand at all times and uh, all kinds of little fillings. Um, you can make butter tarts or lemon tarts or whatever you like, but you've got the pastry already there. So we, uh, we just use it that way. Awesome. <laughs> so we're done with this? Mm -hmm. For a little while. All right, so you'll see us in about 10 minutes. All right, Mommy. Mm -hmm. Okay. 10 minutes. Okay. Let's do it. It's just firmed up nicely. Press it down a little. 
Yeah. His hand yeah. smells so good. Be, be gentle <laughs> with your pie crust because uh, you, you don't be in too much of a hurry because you'll break it up and it won't look beautiful. Okay, mom, so what should we preheat the oven to? 425. Okay, and how long is it going to bake once you have it in there? Um, let's try 10 minutes. Uh, it might go as long as 12 or more depending on your particular oven. When I'm making pie crust, I like to use the convection oven, so it tends to uh, brown the, uh, the pie crust better. Mm -hmm. so. And it's easier to handle when it's cooler, mm -hmm. this pie crust. It stays together better. The whole key to, to working with pie crust is to keep it, keeping it cool while you're doing it. And keeping it round. Yes, <laughs> that's important too. Then when you do a pie crust, since it has so much shortening and you don't need to spray your, your um, pie plate or anything like that, it's just going to automatically not stick. Yeah, and also it'll brown up nicely and that's the good thing about a, a glass pie plate because you can see how brown the bottom crust is. I've always liked the glass ones better anyway. It makes me feel like it's more homey. It reminds <laughs> me, me of too. Grandma. Yeah, me too. At the farm. Now, um, if you're making a two crust pie and it's got a juicy filling in it, you need to make sure that you um, don't have any holes in it. But for the pie that we're making and we're pre-doing the crust, uh, if there are a few holes, it doesn't matter because um, just pinch it together. Uh, in the you plate. have to make holes in it anyhow before you uh, bake it. Right. I think it's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to have a little sharp uh, knife on hand as well so that you can trim the edges. Now, mom just, you, okay, hold on. Did you check out what mom just did? Because this is a really good tip. Yeah. You want to use your, use things to help you. So you have your pastry sheet, you have your rolling pin, and you're just using it to slide on yeah. top of your rolling pin so you can easily. Yes, Put it back into your You plate. don't have to lift lift it up and like a for pizza the best. pie. You don't have yeah. to do that. And while you're doing it, push the crust into the plate. Mm -hmm. And also, pie, uh, pie crust is kind of forgiving in that you can fix any oh, kind yes. of tears or rips or holes in Absolutely. the bottom or along the sides inside the pie plate. You just squish them together. It's no big deal. Yeah. Now, Mom always makes beautiful pies, so this is this is key. <laughs> Check out what mom's doing. Yeah, I have a little hole there that I wasn't happy with. But. So she's just pushing it into the pie plate so that it's touching all the sides and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then what she's going to do is crimp the sides, make it more pretty. Now, I find that um, you, if you leave enough dough to overlap mm -hmm. like that, you can make a, a nice ridge around the edge. And uh, that will help the pie crust not to just um, implode <laughs> it'll it won't just fall in on itself mm -hmm. if you cut it too short these sides will be inclined to fall in and then you can't fill it as much you want to well, put lots of filling in there yeah mm -hmm. and it won't like it if you have part of it that's hanging in there um the the filling will over fill the right it'll, the, go, uh, behind, crust. it'll go behind the crust so even. what i do is i just cut enough to On come the over the top of the rim. Along the outside edge, that's what she's doing, yeah. cutting underneath there. A little bit more than what other people might tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they go right on the top of the rim. And that's, that doesn't work for me. And we love the fillings mm -hmm. that we make, so we want to get as much in as we can. Um, we can put this excess dough since you don't, you're not going to put a top because it's um, a meringue mm -hmm. and you're not going to do a design like you would with a pumpkin pie. Right. We can put the rest of this dough with the other piece that we put in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Mom had a little problem so she just grabbed another piece, stuck it all together. Really now simple. you're going to make it pretty, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to just fold it like this a little bit, just the very tip of the the dough. I'm just going to fold it around first. It's beautiful, Mom. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so she's just pinching the sides and scalloping it. Well, I'm just getting them in, in, into the thing. Okay, now I can do Let the me decoration. Show them. Can I show them? So, so Mom there are has no a, raw edges. 
Mom has it just on the top here, so there's no raw edges. She's just made everything smooth. And now she's going to crimp it and make it pretty. Just to pinch it into those little dents. Oh, in your particular pie There are little dents yeah. there. Okay. Okay, so now all I do is using thumb and four fingers. Four fingers, F-O-R-E. <laughs> Not F-O-U-R, <laughs> four of them. Like but that. you are using four fingers. And you're just <laughs> making a wavy design around yeah. the edge. Pulling one and pushing the other. I'm pretty excited there about this. There are lots of different designs you can use, but yeah. this is uh, easy. I'm really excited yeah. about our orange meringue pie today. Yeah, that's going to be good. It's going to be beautiful, too. Be Something fun. different. So we're. Uh, when I was on the radio the other day, make sure you check out that podcast. I'll have it on the site for you when I was on the radio speaking with Tim Dennis about Easter mm -hmm. he was like wow orange meringue I'm like, yeah. we do um he asked if we do traditional Easter or if we do mm -hmm. a modern Easter and we do both we do some very traditional dishes like our ham is going to be very traditional today very retro-ish and uh and we're going to put a swing on an old classic of lemon meringue and make orange meringue Beautiful. Let me show them how gorgeous this is. Are you going to make pricks in the bottom too? Yes. Okay, you need a fork. So mom is just way. pricking the edges because what happens if you don't do that, what will happen is you have all that nice shortening in there and it's going to blister and it's going to, you know, bubble. And you don't want bubbles. You want filling to fill where the bubbles are. So you want to keep everything nice and flat. You need that air to be able to come through. I also do the sides so that you don't get a big bubble in the sides. Not side. that you don't, you don't, I mean, you can not do it if you want to. <laughs> You it's gonna to. be okay, but uh, this just helps you a little more make everything more even. I don't like this case. Oh, so <laughs> now she's just using the bottom. Stuff. I would say you're doing it what about 50 times? 40, 50 times. So as she was saying, if you have a hole in the bottom or the side, it's not really a huge giant deal because you're actually putting holes in the bottom. Our oven is almost up to heat, and again, she said we're using convection. It bakes it a little That's better. That's a beautiful pie crust. Check it out. That's mom's pie crust. Classic, beautiful pie crust, okay? So we're just waiting for our oven to finish heating. Mm -hmm. It'll be a couple seconds and okay. you'll see us then. Okay, our oven's up to heat. This is going in 10 minutes and we're checking it. Mm -hmm. It might go 12 minutes, but we're gonna look at it at 10. There's our timer. That's a beautiful pie crust. Is that done enough for you, mom? Oh, yes. So today, okay. this took the full 12 minutes and an extra two minutes. Mm -hmm. And it just depends on the day. Yeah, it absolutely does. Sometimes it's is. done in eight minutes. Um, this is lovely. Look at how gorgeous this is. And all flaky. You can just tell that it's all flaky and crispy. How beautiful. So that's how you make mom's classic pie crust. Um, make sure that you check out the orange meringue recipe if you want to know how to do that. Or you can use this same pie crust for any other pies that we talk about, mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's how you do it. Make sure you check out Mom's website at ingridturnertoday.com. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at facebook.com slash cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on ifood.tv slash cooking with Kimberly and youtube.com slash cooking with Kimberly. And my site is cookingwithkimberly.com. That's it, that's all. Thanks, Mommy. You're welcome, baby. Mwah. Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye-bye. Man, that smells good.